The uh, dwarf planets are also classified as the trans-Neptunian objects. So remember, trans-Neptunian just means past Neptune. So all the Kuiper Belt objects, the Oort cloud and the dwarf planets all fall into this category, including Pluto because it orbits farther than Neptune as well. And so when we look at the collection of all of the largest uh, trans-Neptunian objects that we have so far found, then we can see um, Pluto and Charon here, and then um, Eris, Haumea and Makemake, along with another um, kind of group of small and round objects, many of which have moons. So uh, these eight trans-Neptunian objects, um, you know, some of them are classified as dwarf planets. So we'll look at the classifications here to figure out which ones we would classify that way. Um, but it's just interesting to notice that there's uh, actually quite a lot of large round kind of planetesimal type um, objects out there in the Kuiper Belt. And that uh, one of them even has a ring. So here's Haumea, which is kind of a squashy football shape, has a ring and two moons. All right, so um, thinking about what is the criteria for a planet versus a dwarf planet versus something else, um, the astronomical, astronomical community had to come up with these criteria relatively recently. So until, I don't know, the early 2000s, Pluto was considered a planet. Um, so Pluto here. Um, but then we discovered Eris. And Eris is also very similar to Pluto in terms of its overall mass. And so it seemed unfair for Pluto to be a planet and Eris not to be a planet. So either we needed to widen the definition of planet to include Eris and other objects that we might find like it, or we needed to contract the definition of a planet so that we would exclude both of them and keep only Mercury through Neptune. So we decided to do the second option and exclude Pluto, boot it out of the club. And so these criteria for planets are now that the object must orbit the sun. Um, it must be approximately spherical and it also must dominate its orbit. So by orbit the sun, that's pretty clear criteria. Approximately spherical is something that we can mm, debate somewhat, um, but pretty obvious. But dominate its orbit, what does that mean? It means that it cannot share its orbit with a large number of other bodies. So when we think about, um, for example, the Earth, there are, I guess, some Trojans, right? Trojan asteroids in our Lagrange points, but other than that, there's not objects in Earth's orbital zone, right? Uh, all those objects have be become part of the planet. Um, but that's not true for dwarf planets. So if you're missing number three, if you don't dominate your orbit because there are still other objects in your orbital distance that you haven't gathered up, then you're not a planet, you're just a dwarf planet. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply these criteria to a few cases. Um, thinking about first um, Ganymede. So which of these requirements does Ganymede not satisfy? Since Ganymede orbits Jupiter, then it doesn't meet criteria A, so it fails the planet test. Okay, so which one of the requirements does Pluto not satisfy? 